Let's begin by offering our respects to the founder Acharya of ISKCON, His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. नमस्ते सरस्वते देवे गौरवानी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पश्चात्य देशतारिणे हे कृष्णा करुणा सिंधु दीन बंधु जगतपते गोपेश गोपिका कांत राधा कांत नमोस्तुते तप्त कंचन गौरंगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानु सुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वाचकलपतरु व्यश्च कृपा सिंधु व्यव पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधार श्रीवासादि गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे प्लीज रिपीट आफ्टर मी ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते ओम नमो भगवते ओके सो वी वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यू टू आवर वीकली भगवत गीता क्लासेस वी हैव हियर विद अस दीप्ति अदनानी वेलकम बैक दीप्ति थैंक यू देन वी हैव लवीना Aunty Nita, Ayush, Deepa, Harman Bakshani. Then iPhone six. I don't know who's iPhone six. Then we have Jagrati, Lal, and Mehak Melwani, Manju, Meena Barwani, Mehak Bakshani. We have N C Venkatchari, Rajiv Kumar. My parents are there. Then we have Ranjit Das, Ritu Lalwani, Saket. Sandra, Vivansh, Rinda Gopika Mata Ji. Oh, and we have Minakshi and Vivansh. Okay. So, what did we see in the previous class? About the guna. Okay, the guna, guna is a guru. Guna is a guru. Okay. And 
हाउ मेनी गुना ज्यादा है और मोड्स ऑफ मटेरियल नेचर हाउ मेनी मोड्स ऑफ मटेरियल नेचर हाउ मेनी मोड्स ऑफ मटेरियल नेचर हाउ मेनी थ्री वॉट आर दे सदोगुण रजोगुण तमोगुण वेरी नाइस वॉट एल रिसीव Krishna said that he is a source of everything material and spiritual. Mm -hmm. So what belongs to Krishna's material energy? Or uh, what <clears throat> sorry not material energy but what belongs to Krishna's external energy? External energy. Yeah. <clears throat> what are the material elements? Air, water, fire, ether. Yes, very nice. The gross elements and then the also the subtle elements. What are the three mm -hmm. subtle elements? Mind, intelligence and false ego. Yes, mind, intelligence and false ego. So Krishna first says that <clears throat> he is a source of Uh, material energy and then he says he's also the source of spiritual energy so we living entities we belong to krishna's superior energy or inferior energy external energy internal energy superior or inferior we living entities the jivas superior superior energy but then when we are here we are dominated by the material energy so see the superior energy is being dominated by the inferior energy what is the reason for that we saw in the previous class because of our in the material world what's that vivansh can you come again because it was in the material world what is in the material us ah yes because we are associated because of our deep association with matter for so long because we uh, we identify ourselves with material nature therefore although we belong to krishna's superior energy we are coming under the dominance of krishna's inferior energy so how can we reverse this condition again by going to the spiritual world no no before going to the spiritual world itself we have to reverse this condition if we don't reverse the condition then we remain in the material world so how to reverse the condition to be able to go to the spiritual world say krishna's holy name or surrender unto him ah yes by surrendering to krishna so when we surrender to the lord then we can uh, reverse this condition again very nice vivansh okay so what analogy does krishna give to say that there is no truth superior to me everything rests on me as who can fill in the blanks he gives an analogy we said that the power of the visible is only an iota of the power of the invisible so what was that analogy that krishna gives everything rests on me just as how pearls are strung on a thread yes so the invisible element in that necklace in the in the pearl necklace is the thread if the thread is not there then these pearls are not going to be held to together so krishna says that he is that invisible thread you no know? we we may not be able to we are not we, we may not be yet qualified to see him face to face but just because everything is existing we know that 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 connecting link the one that's holding everything together is krishna because krishna says that he is the one who destroys he is the one who maintains and he is the one who creates just as another example we can give is uh, food you may have a 
a table full of very delicious uh, preparations. Yes. But what is the one element that is invisible and makes everything actually delicious is salt. If that salt is missing in all those preparations, then everything is going to be tasteless. So salt is something that uh, costs. Uh, it's it's a it's 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 not a commodity yes. that is very expensive. Yes, it is very easily readily available. You cannot see it in the food, and you don't appreciate it unless it is absent in the food, isn't it? We take it for granted. So bhakti is something that is very uh, that is very accessible to us. It is, it's not cheap, it is very precious, but it is something that can be easily done. Anybody, anywhere, anytime, under any circumstances can practice bhakti. So uh, bhakti is that uh, element, that 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 strong element. So Krishna says that he's, he's that, uh, uh, he's that, uh, it's, it's, he is that power or that potency that is keeping everything together. And, and sometimes we may tend to take it for uh, granted. Okay. Then Krishna said that he is the essence of everything. Can you give some of the examples? We saw many examples. Can you mention a few examples of how he says he is the essence of so many things? For example, he said he is the taste in water. Can you give more? Can you add more to the list? Anybody? You can refer to the notes. You can refer to your Veda base. He says, I am the taste of water, the light of the sun and the moon, the syllable Om in the Vedic mantras and I am the sound and ether and ability in men. Yes, very nice. More? The moonlight gives a juice to the vegetables. Even the syllable Om is none other than Krishna. Yes, very nice. Any more? Anybody wants to add to the list? The light of moon? Yeah, that's already done. Next. After Om is Om is created in, by inside of Krishna and it's non-different from Krishna. Okay. So Om also we've already covered. More essences I'm saying. Okay, can you go to vedaves.io, chapter number 7, verse number 9? I'm the original fragrance of the earth. He's the original fragrance of the earth? Yes. Uh, the I Prabhu, he, is, he is Lion Garuda. He's written in the chat. But that is not what we saw in chapter 7. That comes later. Hmm? But yes, the answer is... He's the heat in the fire. Heat in the, the fire? I'm the life of all that lives and I'm the penance of all ascetics. Yes. Then verse 10. What does he say? All power. He is omnipotent. All powerful. Present everywhere. He knows everything. Present yes. past and future. Yes. And he is in our lives. We can change our when we bring Krishna in our lives, we can change our karmas also. Yes. Bhakti is the game changer. So there is no way we can change our karma unless and until we surrender to Krishna. Because Krishna can rewrite the rules of the game. Otherwise, we are only going to be under the law of nature and under the karmic cycle. So the game changer is Krishna. Okay, then in verse 10, what does he say? He said, he's the original is seeds of all existence. Yes. Intelligence, and of, the intelligence of the intelligence and the power, prowess of the prowess, pro powerful men. Okay. Then in verse 11, what does he say, Lavina? 
He is the strength of the strong and devoid of the passion and desire. And uh, he says he is the sex life, which is uh, not contrary to the religious principle, principles also. Yes, exactly. <clears throat> nice. All states of... Vivansh, you are muted. Were you saying something? All states of beings. What's that? All states of beings. Okay. So, is Krishna Nirgun Nirakar? Is God Nirgun Nirakar? He is Nirguna. Yes and no. Yes. He is Nirguna. He is Nirakara. Yeah. So he, he does not have a form, but he does not have a material, material. form. He has a spiritual, spiritual form. form. Yeah. He is Nirgun. He has he is without qualities, but he is without material qualities. But he does have spiritual qualities. Now, if somebody argues that you are limiting God. By saying that he has a form, how do we answer that question? Sorry, hmm? Where? can I? I didn't get the question. If somebody argues, let's say we are telling people that God has a form, and the person says no, but if you say that God has a form, you are limiting that person to that form. But actually, God is limitless, formless. So, how do we answer? How do we counter argue? How can we counteract that argument? How can we counteract that argument? We discussed this in the previous class. Yeah. Mataji, what is the question? If somebody is to tell us that when you say that God has a form, then you are limiting God. But God cannot be limited. How are we going to counter-argue? God is limitless. And he has some, like he has some sort of, some numbers of opulences. Yeah, so the person is saying that yes, God is limitless. So then how can you say that God has a form? Because when you say that God has a form, the person is arguing that when you say that he has a form, then you are limiting God. You are putting a limit there. But when you say God is formless, then he is Ananta. This is what the person is arguing. And we just show them Bhagavad Gita and Bhagavatam. Uh, but... And it's there. And the Vedas and the Shastras. And then we show yeah. them the Prabhupada's way. So. <laughs> yeah, but you are in, in a conversation. Are you going to sit and read the entire Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavatam and all the Shastras of the person? In a conversation, what are you going to say immediately? Okay, Mataji, some clue. Okay, let's wait for somebody else. If somebody else can, because we have already explained this in the previous class. Can anybody recall? Or can anybody go through the slides? We have shared the slides in the group also. It's there. Mataji, if we can say, telling them that uh, we we can recipro reciprocate uh, uh, a person having a two-handed form. So we can tell them that we can see uh, uh, God, uh, like uh, Krishna or God comes in the form of two-handed form so that we are able to re reciprocate. But he is not an ordinary human being. He brings all the spiritual powers and uh, comes. So it is easy to reciprocate that way. Okay, very nice. Okay, full marks, Neha. So yes, we can reciprocate with the Lord because even when we see the Murti and we serve the Murti, we develop attachment to the Murti and the Lord reciprocates even through the deity. Hmm? Mm -hmm. I was just reading. Okay, we'll come to that uh, pastime later. There is a temple in South India uh, where the deity was reciprocating. We will discuss that later. But okay, yes, the deity or where the Lord comes appears, he can reciprocate. Uh, but when he's only the light or he's Ananta, he's situated everywhere, then the reciprocation uh, or the intimacy relationship can be more challenging. Okay, very nice. But what did we see in the previous class? 
This this was not something that we discussed in the previous class, but of course the answer is correct. But what did we say in the previous class? What is it that limits? Does form limit the Lord? Does form limit anyone? What is it? What is yes, the yes. criteria? Our, our, form, our form is limited, but Krishna's form is not limited. No, no, but the point is, what is it that brings limits? Is it the form or something else? What is the criteria for limitation? Um, something the else? matter. Ah, it's the matter. Very nice, Ayush. So what limits is that which is material. Anything that ma that is material comes with limitations. But anything that's spiritual has no limitations. So therefore, when the Lord appears, he is completely spiritual. So you cannot say that you can limit him, even though he appears, uh, you know, in the form of a human being. But still his body is completely spiritual. So because his body is completely spiritual, you cannot limit him. He is limitless. Mm. Okay, so that which limits is not the form. The criteria for limitation is whether it is material or it is spiritual. Now, our body is material or spiritual? Material. Our material. body is material. So, therefore, when death occurs, what, what happens to the body? It is either burnt or buried or given to wild animals to be eaten. Is it some communities, yeah. Parsi communities, they, they put the body open for. So, anyway, yeah. every community has a certain way of disposing the body because it's just a dead body. Our body is not spiritual so therefore our body has limitation but krishna's body is completely spiritual so you cannot say that you are limiting him by giving him a form or he is lim or not giving we don't give him a form but he comes in the come comes like an ordinary human being like an ordinary human being he is not an ordinary human being so although he comes like an ordinary human being it appears that way he is completely spiritual his body is completely spiritual so you cannot limit him when krishna showed the virat roop um, to Arjuna on the right there on the battlefield. So where is the limitation? He had the 200 form, right? Or he has a chariot driver and then he has showed him the thousands and thousands of arms, heads, eyes, nose, so many, I mean, and wherever Arjuna was seeing, he was only seeing the universal form. He was only seeing that Virat Roop. Arjuna was not able to see the sky anywhere. Wherever Arjuna was turning, he was only seeing the universal form. So you, so what limits is matter. It's not the form. So this is how we are going to counter argue if somebody comes up with this argument. In the notes it says omnipotent, omnipresent and omniscient. All powerful, present everywhere, knows everything. Yes, that was from a previous shloka. See, this is the slide that we saw. Do personality, can you see the screen? Yes. Okay. There's just a, there's a just, just no, a. No, there is no screen. No, Mataji, no. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. I, I forgot to show one second. Okay, now yes. Yes, Mataji. Yeah. So this is the this is the slide that we saw. Hmm? Vedic wisdom helps us understand that what causes limitation is not form but matter. What pastime is this in the photo? When Krishna becomes like uh, when he when he becomes like um all the all the gwalas, all the gopgan, when he took the forms, when his, his thing got stolen. Yes, his, very his, nice. His house and, okay. His very cowboy. good. Yes. So Krishna stole, I mean, who stole the calves and the gopas? The Brahma. Brahma. Indra. Not Brahma. Indra. Indra. No, no, not Indra. Lord, Lord Brahma stole them. This, this, Leela, this Leela is called Brahma Vimohana Leela where Lord Brahma was completely bewildered. Why? Because, see, this happened, this pastime happened immediately after the uh, killing of Aghasura. When Krishna was five years old, he killed Aghasura. And then Lord Brahma said, Aghasura, this, this, this very powerful demon, because Aghasura was eight miles long. And when he opened his mouth, it was like a huge mountain. His body was uh, big, like a like a mountain, right? When he opened his mouth, it appeared like there is a huge mountain. And the, the Gopas, uh, they thought that his tongue was a road. And they all entered. They thought they are entering a cave. But they actually, they were entering Agasura's mouth. And then in order to protect the Gopas, uh, Krishna went inside Agasura and he ripped him apart internally, right? And then the, all the Gopas were uh, freed. 
So when this pastime happened, Brahma was thinking that this uh, small little boy, is he really the supreme personality of God? Just this five-year-old boy, he has killed Agasura. <clears throat> so Brahma said, let me uh, play a trick. So he kidnapped the calves and the Gopa friends, all these Gopas of Krishna. So what did Krishna do? He expanded into each of those Gopa friends, into each of those calves, so that the mothers of those Gopa friends and the and the, the cows are don't have to feel separation from their children. So Krishna expanded into each one of them. And for one whole year, Brahma uh, has these uh, Gopas and the calves stolen. And then Brahma comes back to see what's going on because Krishna has not, uh, I mean, nothing has, nothing has, he's just kidnapped them, what's going on. So then Brahma comes to see and then Krishna, he sees in each of these Gopa friends that each of these Gopas and calves are actually expans expansions of Krishna. You can see in this photo. Hmm? So Brahma was completely bewildered. And this is called as a Brahma Vimohana Leela. So Krishna actually during this past time, when Brahma stole the... Uh, the calves and the cowherd boys Krishna was only five years old so you can see how so you cannot say that because Krishna is a five-year-old boy he he is limited he has limited strength or he cannot expand himself no he is also unlimited okay <clears throat> so we'll start today's class Section 3, Krishna controls the modes, so surrender. This is the subtitle. Who can read today? Mataji, can I read? Yes, Sri Hari Radha Mataji. Let's hear the shloka. Trivir gunamaya bhavair evis sarvamidam jagan mohidam nabijanati um, deluded by the three modes, goodness, passion, and ignorance. The whole world does not know me, who am alone above, above the modes of in, inexhaustible. Hare Krishna. So in the previous section, Krishna was talking about he, how he is the essence of everything. So one may say, okay, if he is the essence of everything, then why is it that people do not surrender to Krishna? So what is the reason that people do not surrender? Krishna says, because they are deluded by the three modes. Because they are under the influence of the three modes of material nature. Under the influence of goodness, passion and ignorance. Because of that, the whole world does not know me. So the reason why people do not surrender to Krishna, although he is the essence of everything, he is the source of everything, is because we are under the influence of the modes of material nature. And then Krishna goes on to say that he is above the modes. So Krishna is above the modes of material nature. He is not within the modes of material nature. And this is the reason why Krishna does not have to follow the rules and regulations that we have to follow. Therefore, people say that, oh, Krishna, people have a problem. Krishna has so many gopis. Why is he dancing with the gopis? Why does Krishna marry 16,108 wives? Why, uh, why is Krishna instigating war, they will say. Why did Krishna instigate Arjuna to fight the war and cause the death of so many people? Some people say Krishna is a failed politician. They even say he's a failed politician because he failed to prevent the war. So these statements are coming because people are under the modes of material nature. They do not understand Krishna. Krishna is above the modes. He can do what he wants. He writes the rules of the game. Okay. So he does not have to follow the rules and regulations. He's above the modes. And then he says he's inexhaustible. He's avyayam. See, this quote from the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Lord Chaitanya is speaking to Sanatan Goswami. Krishna is the origin of Lord Vishnu. So Krishna is the origin of Lord Vishnu. It's not vice versa. He should always be remembered and never be forgotten at any time. All the rules and prohibitions mentioned in the Shastras should be the servants 
of these two principles. So in our Shastras, there are so many rules and regulations. Yes. But there are two rules and regulations, which is of, of whom all the other rules and regulations are servants. What is that? Always remember Krishna. Never forget Krishna. Everything is encapsulated in these two instructions. Lord Chaitanya is saying this to Sanatan Goswami. <clears throat> This divine energy of mind consisting of three, the three modes of material nature is difficult to overcome, but those who have surrendered unto me can easily cross beyond it. Hare Krishna. See so here, first time Krishna is talking about surrender. If you see in the Bhagavad Gita, first time he is talking about surrendering unto him. Now Krishna is saying this divine energy of mind, these three modes of material nature is very difficult to overcome. See, he says, Mama Maya Duratyaya. It's very, very hard, very difficult to overcome. We cannot overcome the modes of material nature by our own endeavor. So therefore, now what is the solution? How can we actually do it? Those who surrender unto me can easily cross beyond it. So when we surrender to Krishna, mission impossible becomes possible. Because again, Krishna is the game changer. So the way by which we can overcome the modes of material nature is by surrendering to Krishna. What is the best way to surrender? The best way to surrender is never to forget Krishna and always remember Krishna, two principles. So how can we do that? By chanting his name. Ah, by chanting the holy name. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. This is the most potent mantra. That's why it's called as the Maha Mantra. Man means mind, tra means to liberate. So when we chant the holy name, automatically we are remembering Krishna and we don't forget Krishna. The stage will come as you chant every day, day in and day out, 16 rounds. The stage will come when even when you are not verbally chanting, probably you're doing something else, you're cooking or you're, you're, you're helping your children with your studies, whatever it is going on in your subconscious mind. It is continuously going on, right? So that way you will never forget Krishna and you will always remember Krishna. Just as how when we listen to a Bollywood song too many times, then that song keeps playing in our mind. Yes, that I'm sure that has happened to most of us. So when we chant, instead of listening to material sound vibration, instead when we chant and we put the spiritual sound vibration in our ears, then that keeps on playing in our mind. So that way we never forget Krishna and we always remember Krishna. So the best way to surrender is to chant the holy name. So the way to overcome. So Krishna is presenting the problem. He's saying, yes, the problem is this. You cannot overcome. It is very, very difficult. Mama Maya Duratyaya. But how to solve this problem? He's also giving us the solution. By surrendering, we can very easily. So that which is so difficult can be very easily done by surrendering to Krishna. See, Krishna says, Daivihi Esha Gunamai. So here you can see the three modes of material nature and everybody is under the influence of the three modes of material nature. But Krishna is above the three modes. So when we surrender to Krishna, then these modes will, are not going to uh, trouble us. So this is one universe. We have discussed how there are millions of universes uh, that are being generated by the breathing of Mahavishnu. So who is the superintendent of this material world superintendent in charge vishnu oh, vishnu durga ma durga yes yeah. durga yes she is the superintendent of the material world so she is not going to allow you to leave her domain so easily not so fast not so easy when we are qualified then she will allow you to leave her domain durg means fort Mm -hmm. So a fort is heavily guarded by the soldiers. You cannot easily uh, leave the fort and go. If you are imprisoned there, you cannot so you cannot leave so easily, isn't it? But if you surrender to the king, the king may give the instruction to the guard that please let him go. So mm -hmm. like that, because Krishna is ultimately the the supreme. Krishna already said that all the material and spiritual uh, worlds are coming from him. So Krishna can instruct, uh, and then the person can leave. 
the fort so with the with um, this is durga devi mm -hmm. so here in um, we are going to see some quotes from the brahma samhita about durga about her position and her um, what is it that she does but before we can read from the brahma samhita let us know a little bit about the brahma samhita so this is given in the chaitanya charitamrita madhya lila in the temple of adi keshava shri chaitanya mahaprabhu discussed spiritual matters among highly advanced devotees while there he found a chapter of the brahma samhita does anybody know where is this adi keshava temple very very famous temple adi keshava perumal temple is it somewhere in south india yes in south india which part of south india is it kanchipuram 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 is it in kerala no close it's somewhere in, Ch in south tamil nadu it is somewhere tamil nadu yes it's actually on the tamil nadu uh, it's in tamil nadu and close to the kerala border this temple is there very very famous temple the deity is in a sleeping position and you have to see the deity through three doors there mm -hmm. is also one more very famous deity in south india in kerala also mm -hmm. where the deity uh, is reclining on another shesha and you have to see the deity through three doors three which doors. other temple is that shri padmanabha swami ananta padmanabha swami yes very nice so if you see this ananta padmanabha swami temple and this um, Adi Keshava temple, they are very, very similar in their architecture and also the deity is very, very similar. And this deity of Adi Keshava is uh, lying in such a position that he is looking towards the deity of Ananta Padmanabh Swami. Mm -hmm. And a very interesting story is that this deity of uh, Adi Keshava was, uh, this temple actually was destroyed by a Nawab at that time. And uh, out of animosity, he had kept this uh, deity, not the huge deity, but uh, another small deity, which is uh, the Utsav deity. You know, for when they take the deity out for Utsav and the temple, then they have an Utsav deity, a smaller deity. So he had kept this Utsav deity amongst all kinds of other rubbish items, uh, the, the Nawab. But every time he put uh, the deity, this Utsav deity would come up and lay on top of all that pile of rubbish. And every time he would put the deity down and put other uh, uh, rubbish items on top, again, the deity would come up and sit on top. So then, then what the Nawab did was, uh, he tied the deity down. He chained the deity by drilling two holes on the pedestal of the deity and he chained the deity. After that, the Nawab's wife fell very sick and she was not able to tolerate the pain that she was going through. And then the deity appeared in the dream of the uh, temple priest. And he said that, please tell the king that if he restores the deity back to the temple, then the wife will be cured of her disease. And then the priest was able to convince the Nawab, he returned the deity. And then the uh, deity was restored back to the temple. And the queen was cured of her disease. So see how the deity reciprocates. Deity is not just stone or wood or metal. The deity also reciprocates. Even now, I was reading on the internet that they do a uh, a puja there because then the king he donated some paraphernalia for the lord and he instituted uh, he he sponsored an annual puja uh, for that deity and even today for 21 day period that puja is uh, done and that has a one I have forgotten that term one second let me see It is called Tiru Allah Puja. It's called Tiru Allah Puja. That is done for uh, 21 days uh, annually over there. So because the king then became very favorable and he was sponsoring that puja. Even to this day, that puja is done. Uh, with the Utsav Murti. Okay. Coming back to our class. Agar. 
Tam. Okay, so here it was in this temple of Adi Keshava Perumal temple that Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu found this particular chapter of the Brahma Samhita. Actually, Brahma Samhita has 100 chapters and he happened to find the fifth chapter in that temple. So then what happened? Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was greatly happy to find a chapter of the scripture and symptoms of ecstatic transformation, trembling, tears, perspiration, trance and jubilation were manifest in his body. So like Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was so very happy to find that particular chapter of the Brahma Samhita. There is no scripture equal to the Brahma Samhita as far as the final spiritual conclusion is concerned. Indeed, that scripture is the supreme revelation of the glories of Lord Govinda, for it reveals the topmost knowledge about him. Since all conclusions are briefly presented in the Brahma Samhita, it is essential among all the Vaishnava literatures. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu copied the Brahma Samhita and then with great pleasure, he went to a place known as Ananta Padmanabha. So after Lord Chaitanya, this was during Lord Chaitanya's story. If you go to your Veda base and go to your Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya Leela chapter 9, you can see how Lord Chaitanya uh, Mahaprabhu has visited all these different holy places. So after he visited the Adikeshava temple and he found the Brahma Samhita, he copied it out. Then he went on to visit the Ananta Padmanabha temple. So, so much about the Brahma Samhita. So, here in this Brahma Samhita, Lord Brahma is explaining the position of Durga Devi. So, he says, lowest of all is located Devi Dham, mundane world. So, this material world is called as Devi Dham because Lord, uh, Goddess Durga is the fortress of this material world. So, therefore, it is called as Devi Dham. Next above it is Mahesh Dham. Now, who is Mahesh? Shiva. Ah, Lord Shiva. Shiva. So Lord Shiva is between the material and the spiritual worlds. Above the material world is the abode of Lord Shiva. So that abode is between the material and the spiritual worlds. And above them all is located Krishna's own realm named Goloka. So above Mahesh Dham is Krishna's realm called Goloka. Then Lord Brahma says, I adore the primeval Purusha Govinda who has allotted their respective authorities to the rulers of those graded realms. So Krishna has allotted different, different authorities, different, different devatas for different, different mm. functions. Mm. The eternal potency of Maya, who is of the nature of the shadow of the Chit potency, is worshipped by all people as Durga. So this external potency, so, Krish, uh, so Durga, see actually there are two uh, Maya Devis. One is Mahamaya and one is Yoga Maya. This Durga Devi here is Mahamaya. She is in charge of the material nature and she is actually an expansion of Yoga Maya. Yoga Maya is in the spiritual world. And Yoga Maya's function is to take the living entities closer to Krishna. Because what Yoga Maya does is she makes you forget that Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead. So when you forget that Krishna is a supreme personality of God, for example, all the residents of Vrindavan or Mother Yashoda, they are all under the influence of Yoga Maya. Now, why does Yashoda uh, have this very intimate relationship with Krishna? Why? How is it possible that she's able to chase Krishna with that stick and she's able to punish Krishna and Krishna is crying and she is singing that Krishna is my Lala, Krishna is my son? Is because she's under the influence of Yoga Maya who makes Yashoda forget that Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead. If Yashoda was to remember that this Krishna, my son Krishna, is actually the supreme personality of Godhead, she will not be able to relish those uh, sweet pastimes, sweet leelas with Krishna. Even Krishna will not be able to enjoy those pastimes because there will be always that reverential uh, element, no? the, the, the element of respect, the, the, that formality will be there in the relationship. So even the residents of Vrindavan, the Gopa, somebody is riding on Krishna's back. Krishna is eating from the tiffin box of his friends. Can we do that? Can we, can we eat something and give Krishna to eat? We cannot do that, right? Because we are not on that level. But Krishna, he... He's eating from the tiffin box of his friends. Somebody's riding on Krishna's back. Krishna is riding on somebody's back. So all this intimacy is there because Yoga Maya makes them forget that Krishna is the supreme personality of God. So her job, Yoga Maya's 
a service is to take people closer to Krishna by making them forget that Krishna is God. But Mahamaya, Mahamaya tempts us with so many things and she takes the living entities away from Krishna. So Durga Devi, who's, who's functioning in the material world, she, uh, she brings in obstacles and hindrances and temptations so that we can forget Krishna and we can move away from Krishna. So this Durga is actually Mahamaya. The creating, preserving, and destroying agency of this mundane world. I adore primeval Purusha Govinda in accordance with those, in accordance with whose will Durga conducts herself. So Durga is conducting herself under the will of Govinda. Who is saying this? Who is saying this? Was it Kavira? Lord Brahma? Lord Brahma. Brahma, yes, because we are reading from the Brahma Samhita. No, so we are, these are Lord Brahma's quotes. So Lord Brahma is saying that Govind, uh, Durga Devi conducts herself in accordance with the will of Govinda. Govinda is none other but, but who is Govinda? Krishna. Krishna. Is no. Isn't it? If you, yeah. this Brahma Samhita is also available on your Veda Vase. If you would like to read, it's there in your Veda Vase. It begins, this fifth chapter begins with what line? Anybody knows? What are the opening lines of the fifth chapter of the Brahma Samhita? Ishwara, Parama, Krishna. These are the opening lines. Ishwara, Parama, Krishna. Then, Satchitananda, Vigraha. So Krishna is the supreme personality of God, Ishwara Paramakrishna, Satchit Ananda Vigra. He is eternal. He is Satchit Ananda. Hmm. He is eternal, full of uh, bliss and full of knowledge. Anadir Adir Govinda. He has no other origin but himself. Sarva Karana Karanam. He is the cause of all causes. So the opening lines of Brahma Samhita, if you see on your Veda base, is this. Ishwara Paramakrishna, Satchit Ananda Vigra. Anadir Adir Govinda, Sarva Karana. Karan. And this, uh, these verses, 5.43, 5.44, if you see in the in the Brahma Samhita, the, the middle section of the Brahma Samhita, every verse ends with Govindam Adi Purusham Tamaham Bhajami. Lord Brahma is praying like that. Every verse, actually, to be more precise, from verse number 29 to verse number 55 in the Brahma Samhita, Brahma ends the shlokas by saying Govindam Adi Purusham Tamaham Bhajami. Govindam, Lord Govinda, Adi Purusham. He is the original Purusha. That means every, everything else is coming from him. Govindam, Adi Purusham, Tam Aham Bhajami. I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. Tam Aham Bhajami. Lord Brahma is praying like that. So very nice. This uh, Brahma Samhita was actually translated by Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, the spiritual master of Srila Prabhupada. See here, um, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur writes in the purport, the aforesaid presiding deity of Devi Dham is being described. The world in which Brahma takes his stand and the hymns and hymns the Lord of Goloka is Devi Dham, consisting of the 14 worlds. So we know there are 14 planetary systems. And Durga is its presiding deity. Durga is possessed of Durga, which means a prison house. When Jiva's begotten of the marginal potency, Tathastha Shakti, forget the service of Krishna. They are confined in the mundane prison house, the citadel of Durga. So what do we mean by marginal potency or Tathastha Shakti? We saw previously that we belong to Krishna's superior energy. But although we belong to Krishna's superior energy, we can come under the dominance of material nature. So we belong to the marginal potency. Because we can come under the dominance of material nature, we are tathastha shakti or marginal potency. The wheel of karma is the instrument of punishment at this place. So in this material world, the wheel of karma is the instrument of punishment. The work of purifying these penalized jivas is the duty devolved upon Durga. So Durga's service is to uh, purify uh, those jivas who have been misbehaving. She is incessantly engaged in discharging the same by the will of Govinda. When luckily, the forgetfulness of Govinda on the part of imprisoned jivas is remarked by them by coming in contact with a self-realized soul. So when we come in contact with a devotee, then their natural aptitude for the loving service of Krishna is aroused. Durga herself then becomes the agency of their deliverance by the will of 
ഗോവിന്ദ സോ വേറ്റ് അവർ natural aptitude for loving service so that's why shri prabhupad said that krishna consciousness is not a natural imposition on the mind it is it's not an i'm sorry is not an artificial imposition on the mind it is our natural state so that natural state is aroused by coming in contact with devotees so then what happens then durga herself she becomes the agency for our deliverance by the will of govinda so it behooves everyone to obtain the guileless grace of durga the mistress of this present house by propitiating her with the selfless service of krishna okay harman you have raised your hand yes um i had a question uh, uh, so you you have said that um we are part and parcel of the superior energy correct um, yes but at the same time we can be driven by the inferior energy is uh, am i getting that clear or? yes it's correct we belong to krishna's superior energy but because we can come under the influence of the material nature which is the inferior energy therefore we are neither completely superior nor completely inferior we are marginal you know a margin is something in between yeah 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 so so see krishna previously he said that we belong to a superior nature yes but if one has to be more specific because we are coming under the influence of material nature therefore we belong to krishna's superior marginal energy or tathastha shakti okay so if uh, another question that came to me so if we surrender to krishna that in uh, the marginal energy wouldn't uh, convert it to just the superior energy no the thing is we will always be tathastha shakti because we will always have our free will that free will will always going to be there and we can any time always use our free will and again come under the influence of material nature okay thank you so much hari krishna welcome hari krishna so krishna sorry a, a question so krishna has both the this inferior inferior uh, superior quality and the inferior quality yes so uh, okay with the with our uh, freeness we are selecting the inferior okay, okay. exactly we choose because krishna doesn't force okay mm-hmm. why because if krishna is going to force he can make the whole world krishna conscious conscious and get us back in spiritual world just like that isn't it in one flash but krishna doesn't force us we we have to desire it otherwise mm-hmm. we will become robots krishna doesn't want robots right uh, the relationship is based on love if mm-hmm. if i put a gun on somebody's head and say say that you love me the person may say that he loves me but does he really love me no because it's under fear he's saying isn't it mm-hmm. so therefore this is uh, love is something that's that is voluntary we have to desire it so that's yes. therefore we always have that free will we always have that free will whether and we are in the spiritual world or in the spiritual world internal this feelings yes we have to desire it thank you you're welcome so does that mean even we are liberated we have a free will we can fall down oh yes when we are liberated also we have the free will but of course krishna promises in the bhagavad gita that once we go back to the uh, spiritual world we will not come down again but that's not because we don't have our free will anymore that's because we have learned our lesson the free will is there okay so see this uh, as we discussed this is devi dham then this is mahesh dham are you able to see when i zoom it yes yes mata ji okay so see this is the universe with uh, there are many universes many bubbles uh, that are coming from the body of mahavishnu here so this is one universe with the 14 planetary systems and you can see durga devi here the topmost planet among the 14 planetary systems is lord brahma and then here you can see kailasha which is mahesh dham he is in between and then here you can see vaikuntha loka these are the vaikuntha planets where the lord is residing in the four handed narayan form and then here we have goloka oh my god what did i do now
Okay, so here you can see Durga Devi is taking instructions from the Lord uh, as to what is her function. She has 10 hands. This picture doesn't show her 10 hands. But the Brahma Samhita describes how she has 10 hands. And Krishna is saying, this divine energy of mind consisting of the three modes of material nature is difficult to overcome. But those who have surrendered unto me can easily cross beyond. So this person here is he's in the ocean. And even an expert swimmer cannot cross that ocean, right? Huge ocean is there, very uh, rough waves. So if he surrenders, if he just, he just uh, calls out to the Lord, when we chant the holy name, we are calling out to the Lord. It's like the crying of a child for the mother. So when the child is crying, the mother will drop whatever she is doing and she will go to see what the child is doing. So when we cry out to the Lord, when we call out to the Lord, when we reach out to the Lord, when we surrender to the Lord, then he is here to take us out of this ocean. Very, very easy, isn't it? Isn't this very easy? Rather than being in this ocean, life after life after life after life. How many more millions of lifetimes are we going to surrender to Maya? At some point, we need to take a decision that no more surrender to Maya. I want to surrender to Krishna. But isn't so that it's very rare? So surrender soul that really surrenders is rarest to the rarest? Yes, it's the rarest of the rarest. That's exactly what Krishna is going to say in this next section. Okay, let's see now uh, section four. Krishna is going to talk about uh, the those uh, four categories of people who do not surrender to him and then four categories of people who surrender to him. And then he says amongst those who surrender to him, who is the best? So let's see the section now. Namam Dushkriti no Mudhaha Prapadyante Naradhamaha Mayaya Parata Gyana Asuram Bhava Mashrita Those miscreants who are grossly foolish, lowest among mankind, whose knowledge is stolen by illusion and who partake of the atheistic nature of demons, do not surrender unto me, Hare Krishna. So here Krishna is talking about four miscreants or dushkritinaha, dushkritinaha who do not surrender to Krishna. Okay, Sandra, you have your raise, hand raised. So, uh, Hare Krishna Mataji. Hare Krishna. Uh, I have a question about surrender. Uh, it, it is a grace of Krishna, the fact that we can surrender to him is it the grace of Krishna that we? That we can surrender to him? Yes, Krishna's, yes, it is only by the grace of Krishna that we can surrender to him. So how to invoke that grace is by desiring it. See, the, the, sun, yeah, the sun is there shining for everyone. So Krishna's grace is always there for everyone. The, shine, the sun is shining for everyone. But if I decide to lock myself in the room. Mm, yeah. So then it is my fault, right? I have to, I ha I need to desire to go and take some fresh sunlight, some fresh air. So I have to go out of my dark room. So like that, the living entity has to desire that, yes, I want to take the grace of Krishna. So that desire, yeah. that how do we express that desire? By chanting the holy name. Actually, there are nine items of devotional service. Shravanam, Kirtanam are the most, uh, the first two, the most important. Shravanam and Kirtanam, hearing and chanting. So when we chant, we also hear. Yes, so even if we have that desire, even if we have that de sincere desire, but devotion doesn't arrive. It will most, come. Uh, it will most come. Most of the time, no. Many of the times we, we chant like automatically, no? Like yes. mechanically. Yes, yes. So yes. living in a devotional life, uh, it's not a it's not our decision it's it's really a blessing no yeah so that's why krishna says you do your best okay okay because see krishna there is a verse in the in chapter 9 where krishna says i carry what you lack and preserve what you have so when we are lacking devotion but we are trying our best Right. It's not that I am. I. I mean, it's not that one is. Um, I mean, 
Now we are all materially conditioned, right? We are all raised mm -hmm. in a certain way. We have our material conditionings that are coming from the previous lifetime. So there are so many factors that we are going to, uh, that one needs to consider. Now, yeah. keeping all that on one side, if we sincerely try, then we what we are doing is we are cleaning the mirror of the heart. Just like you have a mirror and dust has accumulated. Now, how many years the mirror has not been cleaned? Depending on that is the accumulation of dust on the mirror. So we have we have crossed through so many millions of lifetimes. There is so much of impurity in the heart. What we do is when we start chanting, even though at in the beginning it, it is mechanical, we may not like it, it is boring, but still we do it because we have to do it. Now, let's say one is doing that. There is no love, there is no emotion, but one is just doing it mechanically, as you said. But we are starting to clean the dust from that mirror. Now, as we go on chanting, go on chanting, we are cleaning that mirror more and more and more. And now the day will come when the heart is completely purified and we are chanting out of love for the Lord. Now that the mirror is completely clean, we can actually see uh, our image very, very clearly, right? So then we realize what is our, um, our constitutional position and then that love. So it will come, it will come with time. It's not a and process so that is done overnight. And so, Mataji, it could happen as well that you arrive to that level of supreme love for Krishna and you are in his presence most of the time. And then suddenly the mirror gets dusty again, or maybe you fall, or maybe even if you continue with your practice, but not is happening and um, um, the practice became the that kind of a state is supposed to happen as well that kind of lost yes the danger of fall down also is always there because we always have our free will again so therefore yeah. it's a constant uh, work we are constantly working on it it's a, it's a it's a lifetime process this is a this is a process for the entire lifetime so what can we do to prevent a fall down if we want to ensure that we do not fall down we have to ensure that we are in the association of devotees that is of utmost importance if we are in the association of devotees then the devotees the, uh, the devotee association that will shield us from fall down but if we are going to associate with materialistic people then we are also going to become materialistic so there are so many other things that we can do that will favor our uh, spiritual life and see if there uh, there are two rules whatever is favorable for your krishna consciousness you accept whatever is unfavorable for your krishna consciousness you reject that's all. If we can just keep these two things in mind, anything that comes across, we ask ourselves the question, is this good for my Krishna consciousness? Yes, then go ahead and do it. Is, there, is this not favorable for my Krishna consciousness? So just reject it. So if we can keep this in mind, then we can, uh, we can prevent a fall down. Okay. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay, so the four people who uh, never surrender to Krishna, those who are grossly foolish, Krishna says, mudhas, right, mudhas. Then who are lowest among mankind, the naradhamas, whose knowledge is stolen by illusion, mayaya, pahartha, then who those who are atheistic or the, uh, I mean, mayaya, pahartha, jnana is, knowledge is stolen by illusion, I'm sorry, and asuras are the, demons the atheistic nature of the demons so these four people krishna says they never surrender to me now let us uh, analyze here we have one two three four four personalities which of these four is a muda foolish there's one with a sack one who's committing a murder there is a scientist here and there is a dictator here. So who is Muda amongst these? The dictator. Huh? The dictator. The dictator. Why? Because a dictator in this case, like I'm going to use an example, like the, in the Romans time, in ancient Rome, 
the Julius Caesar was very strict and he was and Julius Caesar was grossly foolish and those who are grossly foolish are people who do not surrender unto Krishna but also dictators as well okay so what we'll do is we will read the description of these four categories of people and then we'll come back to the picture and analyze. Okay. So let's read about the mudas. So mudas are grossly foolish, working like hard working asses or beasts of burden. So the mudas are those people who are attached to the fruits. They are fruit workers who want to enjoy the fruits of their labor by themselves and do not want to part with them for the supreme so they work hard day in and day night and they want to enjoy the fruits of their labor themselves okay then now the muda does not know for whom he should work so he does not know for whom the person should work he is just working like an ass hmm? just like an ass works hard for his master but does not know for whom he works so hard now in india uh, you have a uh, The washermen, what they do is they collect the dirty clothes for the people, they load them on the back of the ass, and then they take the ass with that heavy burden of clothes to, a, to the river, and then the clothes are washed, and then they are again loaded back onto the donkey's back, and they are brought back. So this ass is working hard day in and day night, and what does the owner do? He just gives the ass some grass to eat. So this ass is working hard day in and day night and he's getting some grass in return. He does not realize that he can get that grass anywhere. He does not have to depend on that owner to eat that grass. He can get the grass anywhere and he can live, right? So asses are those people who are working like, uh, working hard like the asses or the donkeys. Level of happiness for them, destructible material gains are lives all in all. So all that they want is material gains, which are which are going to be destroyed anyway. Although they enjoy a very small fraction of the fruits of their labor. So what actually, see, they work hard day in and day night to make money, but eventually they can enjoy only a very small bit of their labor because ultimately what happens, they die and then the money is left to be enjoyed by their children or other people, friends or family over okay so mudas work hard but sleepless nights they have no time for food he suffers from ulcers indigestion etc similarly an ass is satisfied by filling his stomach by a bundle of grass sleeping for a while under the fear of being beaten and satisfying his sex appetite at the risk of being repeatedly kicked by the opposite party so the asses so what does this mean satisfying his sex appetite at the risk of being repeatedly kicked by the opposite party when the male donkey approaches a female donkey for union then the male donkey is actually kicked by the female donkey in the face, right in the face. So this is what the sentence means. Then there is no time to hear for immortality of the soul. So these mudas, these grossly foolish, hardworking asses, they have no time to hear about spiritual uh, spirituality because they just want to work hard, collect money, collect money, collect money. They don't sleep well. Then they lose their health and eventually they die without any realizations. And then uh, the money is left to be enjoyed by others who have not even worked hard for that money. So these are the mudas. Now tell me, who is a muda in this picture? He's carrying the load on his back. Yes, this person here is a muda, working hard, isn't it? Now let us see Naradhama. So this is a choice that we need to make. Do we want to become donkeys like this? Or we want to become devotees like this. This is a choice that we have to make. Then Naradhamas, lowest of mankind. Nara means human being and Adhama means lowest. So Naradhamas are the lowest of mankind. Now who are these Naradhamas? Naradhamas are those people who are socially and politically developed. But they have no religious principles. So they are uncivilized. The civilized people, they have regulated principles of socially, politically, and religiously. So they are civilized. But Naradhamas are uncivilized because they may be socially and politi politically developed, but they have no religious principles. See, they are the people who lose the chance of using this body for realizing God. Now, baby in the mother's womb, 
promises to worship him after taking birth but he forgets as soon as he gets out and falls into maya so when we are when we were in the wombs of our mothers all of us have promised the lord that i will worship you i will i will behave i will worship you but as soon as we take birth we forget and we fall into maya if you go to shrimad bhagavatam canto 3 chapter number 31 there is actually a very graphic description of the child in the womb how the child in the womb suffers is getting uh, bitten by so many worms the skin is but the skin is actually is not formed so every time the mother eats something very spicy or something very acidic then the whole body of the child starts to burn so like that and the baby is in a very uncomfortable position right it's in a small place it's in a dark place the only thing that the child can do is hear. So uh, this this particular chapter gives a very graphic description of the child in the womb. And in that in that helpless condition, the child in the womb, he's remembering his past lifetimes. And he's promising that in this lifetime, my Lord, I will worship you. But then as soon as we come out, then again, we fall into Maya. So a Naradhama is someone who, who loses that chance of reviving the lost relationship with the Lord. 99%, 99.9% of the population is Naradhamma because they lack the Varnashram system and they don't do the samskaras. We have discussed how there are so many samskaras, no? Starting with uh, Garbhadhana samskara, which is done before the child is conceived, and then the Antim samskara or the last final rites. So because the samskaras are not done by most of the population and because nobody is following the Varnashram, almost no one is following the Varnashram system, therefore most of the human population is Naradhamma. So is there any hope for the Naradhamas? Yes, the mercy of the devotees. So when we come in touch with the devotee of the Lord, then we can, uh, uh, we can reverse the situation. Recommendation of Lord Chaitanya for Naradhamas, they can also be delivered by submissive hearing process. Just hearing submissively from a bona fide authority, from a superior authority. That then also uh, the Naradhamas can be uh, delivered. But usually they neglect this. The Naradhamas do not want to hear about spirituality. If you tell them, come, I'll come and join the Bhagavad Gita class, they say, I'm not interested, right? So they are not in, they are usually not interested in the hearing process. Unfortunate condition of Naradhamas, they refuse to give oral reception to the messages of God and thus Naradhamas neglect the prime duty of the human being. So one example of... 99.9% .9 is written there. You see 99.9%. .9 is that written in the Shastra? That's what Prabhupada writes in the purple. Okay, okay. Okay. Now, uh, one example of Naradhama is Jagayan Madhai. The story is there in the Chaitanya Leela. Jagayan Madhai were two drunkards and they were uh, they were indulging themselves in all kinds of sinful life they were stealing they were robbing they were uh, killing and they were insulting people they were engaged in all kinds of sinful activities mm -hmm. and uh, lord nityananda and haridas thakur they tried to preach to them but they were not interested in hearing uh, them preach and madhai one day struck lord nityananda with a broken clay pot and Lord Nityananda started to bleed. If you see this picture closely here, this is Lord Nityananda in blue. His forehead, he's bleeding. Because Madai had, uh, this is Madai. Madai had struck Lord Nityananda with the clay pot. As soon as Lord Chaitanya, in the golden dhoti, as soon as Lord Chaitanya came to know that Lord Nityananda has been struck, he reached that place and he invoked his Sudarshan Chakra to finish, to kill Madhai. You can see that Lord Chaitanya is invoking his Sudarshan Chakra. Actually, this, um, this incarnation of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was not meant to raise any weapons. He did not use any weapons. But he was so furious when Lord Nityananda was struck because the devotees are very, very dear to the Lord. He immediately invoked his Sudarshan Chakra. He does not care that in this avatar, in this incarnation, he's not supposed to use any weapons right but lord nityananda tells him that please forgive him because the devotee of the lord is more merciful than the lord himself so lord nityananda is pleading with lord chaitanya you can see lord nityananda pleading he's saying that please forgive him do not kill him and then madai uh, surrenders uh, jagai and madai actually they are two brothers they both surrender to lord chaitanya and after that lord chaitanya forgives them and then he 
uh, he is able to make them into stalwart devotees. So see, then Jagai and Madai become stalwart devotees, and then they 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 actually built a, a bathing ghat for all the devotees, so that when they go to bathe in the Ganges, they have a ghat over there where they can bathe. So they had. Uh, build that ghat over there. And if you go to Sri Mayapur Dham, you can actually go and visit this place. Jaga and Madai Samadhi, Madai Tala in Katwa. So you can see how even these Naradhamas, Jaga and Madai, they uh, they were able to become devotees because of the mercy of the Lord and because of the mercy of the devotee of the Lord. So the hope for Naradhamas is devotee association. Then the third category is Mayaya Paharta Jnana. Okay, let's go back to the photo. Who is Naradhama here? Engaging in all kinds of sinful activities. Military. Um, the the, the person black. who was killing that person. Ah, the one who is committing this murder, right? Sinful activity. Okay, now let's come to the third category. Knowledge stolen by illusory energy. So these, these people... They are usually very learned, philosophers, literary poets, but they are misguided and they disobey the Lord. So they are actually scholars, but they are mundane scholars, scholars of materialistic education. So they are materially qualified, materially learned, but they do not want to accept the Lord. They think that God uh, is an ordinary human being. They do not know that the blessed form of human life is designed after the eternal and transcendental feature of the Supreme Lord. So, Mahaya, Paharta, Jnana. They are educated. They are materially educated, but they do not accept. I'm sorry, where did that thing go? So, who here is materially educated? But their knowledge is the stolen scientists. from Maya. Scientists. Yeah, the scientists. The scientists. Yes. Good. And I know the first one. And the fourth one is the, the Asuram Bhavam Ashritaha, envious towards God or atheistic demons. What are their arguments? Supreme Lord can never descend in the material world. He is subordinate to impersonal features, present illicit incarnations from factory of their brain. So they say that the Lord cannot come to the material world. Now, why the Lord cannot come to the material world? They cannot give any proper reason. They just said, no, no, God cannot come. God is always distant. God is always in his abode. God cannot come to the material world. And he is subordinate to impersonal features. So which means that they think that the, that the Lord is coming from the Brahman effulgence. So there are these people who say that Krishna, Rama, and all these incarnations are coming from the Brahman effulgence. So they are subordinate to impersonal features is what they say. And they also present illicit incarnations from factory of their brain. So to present somebody is to present an ordinary human being as God. Hmm? Or they may say that I am God. So this is the fourth category. The envious. Those who are envious towards God. The atheistic demons. Okay. So these are the four categories of people who never surrender to Krishna. There is a quote by Yamuna Acharya. He is an Acharya. Vaishnava Acharya and he says, Oh my Lord, you are unknowable to persons involved with atheistic principles. Despite your uncommon qualities, features and activities, despite your personalities being confirmed by all the revealed scriptures in the quality of goodness and despite your being acknowledged by the famous authorities renowned for their depth of knowledge in the transcendental science and situated in the godly quality. So in spite of all this information, in spite of Shastra saying it, in spite of great authorities acknowledging the Lord, still these people will not um, acknowledge the Supreme Personality of God. So this is the fourth category. We'll stop here in the next class. We will continue and we will see who are the four categories of people who do surrender to Krishna. So that is for next time in Krishna. So sanctions. Srila Prabhupada ki. Thank you, Mataji. Koti Koti Nandvat Panam. Jai Srila Prabhupada. Jai 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 Pataka Maharaj ki. Thank you. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay, so do we have any questions? No? Aradhya, are you joining us for the first time? Yes. Where are you joining us from, Aradhya?
Where are you, Aradhya? Where are you located? Where do you live? We can't hear you. Okay. Are you in the group, WhatsApp group? Okay. All right. Okay, then. Uh, see you all next week if Krishna saw sanctions. Until then, have a nice week in Krishna consciousness. Vancha kalpa taru vyascha. Kripa sindhu vevacha. Patitana pavane bhyo. Vaishna vebhyo namo namaha. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Srimad Bhagavad Gita ki jai. Jai Jai. Jai Srinam Vata ji ki jai. Jai Jai Pata Kamarat ki jai. Thank you. Koti koti nandot pala amdi Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Sanam. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Sanam. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Sanam. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Mataji.